Hey everybody, I am Jesse Ray Ernster. I am a mixer and thank you for joining me at my temporary mixing room here in Los Angeles. <laughs> the main space is under construction. Nonetheless, I'm here. I'm excited to show you two of my favorite plugins that I love to use to re-inject character, vibe, energy, and emotion into mixes. One of them is the Apogee Clear Mountain Spaces plugin, and the other is the Mixland Rubber Band Compressor V2 plugin. And I'm going to show you how I use them on a rock track right now. All right, let's dig in. Here we go. All right, I'm here mixing a great rock record called One of Us by George Lynch and Jeff Pilson off of the Heavy Hitters album that I mixed a few years ago. Man, it's cool to revisit this stuff and see if I can beat it up even better than before. And yeah, it's going pretty well so far. I'm having a really, really good time. I'm starting by dialing in a drum sound. We're, I mean, this is a rock record, but this is this is kind of classic rock. We're going for like sort of a vintage Bonamy sound, a lot of room mics, a lot of energy, a lot of cymbals, a lot of imperfections, but it's just the emotion is there. It's raw, it's aggressive, it's fun. So we don't want to lose that. We don't want to process too much, but uh, I want to dial in the drum sound. I want to hear how it's going to work in the full context of the mix. So now that we have it working, let's solo it and let's start to bring in the other elements and let's see how it stands up in the mix. So the drums by themselves appeared to have enough ambience and enough room mics, uh, but as soon as the guitars came in, that obliterated any possibility of uh, of detecting, you know, the, the resonance and the, the decay of those sounds. So uh, per usual, we are going to have to re-inject some energy and some emotion into this production. And to do that, I have two methods. We're going to be using the rubber band compressor from Mixland and the Apogee Clear Mountain Spaces plugins. So first, we'll start with the rubber band. I have set up a bunch of sends from these drums to go over to this parallel bus where I have the rubber band compressor. This is a really incredible device. It has some really unique modifiers going on under the hood, so the harder you dig into it with gain reduction will actually change the way, the speed, and the character of how it bounces back up at you and how it releases out of gain reduction. Let's dig in. Let's hear it. I'm going to start just turning knobs. A lot of the time, I don't know what knobs do. I don't even care what they say. I just turn it, and I listen for the result. That's what we're going to do here. We're just going to rapid fire, turn a bunch of stuff, and try to get a sound that's going to work. you're just going to blend this parallel fader in to add some vibe to this track. Flipped the uh, over to the vintage mode to cut out some highs just to eliminate some of the symbols. We're going to blend it in one more time and get this thing placed exactly right and then we'll move on to the next step.
So now the only other thing that I've noticed, if we listen to these room mics. You can hear that we're going for that bottom type of sound, but it's not necessarily a huge room. This doesn't sound like a big castle, and that's a problem. So we are going to send these four room mics to a new aux called Clear. Clear Mountain Spaces, baby. And right there, we'll add it in. We are going to extend the length of these room mics with Clear Mountain Spaces. So we're going to listen to these in the mix. I always want to check out reverbs in the mix. So I'm going to turn this fader up really loud and we are going to audition the sound of these three spaces. And we, we might end up blending a few of them. I don't know yet. One of my favorite features of this plugin is that you can hit this DS button. And it's meant to cut a lot of the sibilants and S's out of vocals, but it's also incredible for cymbals. Listen to this. It takes away a lot of the bite and painful shrill. Uh, now we're gonna pop open this EQ tab. This reverb is really flexible because you can just really tweak and modify these things to get it to fit right in the mix where a reverb needs to sit. So there's this kind of mid-range resonance going on there that's eating up a little bit of room. So I want to make a cut there. I'm also going to implement a low and a high pass filter. And now that I've filtered out a lot of the top end that was initially deterring me from being interested in the Roscoe reverb, now this is a really great reverb for adding in all that length to the tail. The tempo of this record is allowing that to happen, right? We've got this... There's a lot of length between snare hits. So that Roscoe can help fill in the gap. All right, now we're gonna bring the fader all the way down and I'm gonna implement something that I'm always practicing. It's called eyes closed, ears open. I'm gonna click that fader, I'm gonna close my eyes and I am just going to move the fader into position just by listening. And when my ears tell my brain to tell me that it's in the right spot, I'm gonna let go. Now we are going to listen with and without these two incredible parallel buses, rubber band compressor from Mixland and Apogee Clear Mountain Spaces. It takes it from a bedroom rock recording into the castle, baby.